The Rockin' Cube is the third member of my puzzle series that started with the M12 cube and Crammed cube. Each puzzle expresses a different permutation group to create a unique solving experience. The group expressed by this puzzle is the simplest of the three, so instead of diving into the theory, I wanted to share my design approach. The process of selecting a permutation group and applying it to a 3D geometry requires a lot of computer algorithms to help identify group generators that can be realized as a physical puzzle. In addition, most groups don't perfectly fit onto regular three-dimensional geometries, so I found it necessary to master a somewhat daunting puzzle-building technique called fudging to expand the realm of possibilities. The first thing you want to do is pick a group to represent, or more realistically, take a long list of groups and spend hours searching through them until you find something that works. But spoiler, the rocking cube represents the projective special linear group 213, so that's the one I'm going to pick. The Atlas of Finite Simple Groups contains a wealth of information about many groups that I'm interested in. PSL 213's natural representation occurs over 14 points, so I'll plug this representation into the gap system as the foundation for computations. Next, you need to search through the group's generators until you find one that can fit a puzzle geometry. A generator is like a collection of moves on a puzzle that can be used to scramble it into any of its possible positions. It's a minimal set of group elements that can be combined to generate the entire group. You can't reach every possible orientation in cubic symmetry just by rotating the cube left and right on its vertical axis. But if you also allow rotating it on its horizontal axis, all 24 orientations are now reachable. You could say that a horizontal rotation combined with a vertical rotation generates the entire group of 24 elements. There are a vast number of generators for PSL213, but I know that most of them aren't going to be geometrically useful. I'm going to restrict my search to just combinations of three cycles because they tend to produce a lot of good results. Now I have to search through every possible pair of order three elements in the group to see which ones are generators. For the first element in the pair, it's sufficient to just pick a representative of each conjugacy class. On this group, there's only one conjugacy class with order three, so I can pick any random three cycle to represent it. Then I can loop through every other order three element, combine it with the first one, and check if that pair generates the full group. It turns out that there are 108 combinations that generate the full group, but many of these are just duplicates. I use an algorithm called graph canonization that will reduce the list to just the non-isomorphic generators. Isomorphic graphs are ones that can be rearranged to look exactly the same. Instead of comparing every pair of graphs to see if they're isomorphic, the algorithm relabels each graph into its canonical form. It will produce the exact same output for any isomorphic input. The program can then process each generator just once, adding it to a new list if its canonical form is unique. With a much smaller list of only nine canonical generators, I can pick one to turn into a puzzle. These three are nearly cuboctahedrons besides the duplicate vertices. Those can be represented by cramming pieces together, which is a technique that I used on the phonogem and the crammed cube. The vertices on the graph represent the puzzle pieces, and each set of colored triangles represent the axes that will be geared together. The direction lines indicate which way each axis turns with respect to the others. These three graphs have the same geometry, but different turning directions. Two of the three are mirrors of each other. They are technically not isomorphic, but will produce effectively the same puzzle. The third graph has mirror symmetry built in, and since more symmetry tends to produce a more interesting puzzle, I chose this one. Most of my recent puzzles are constructed from generator pairs. But you don't need to stop there. Triplets or larger sets can reveal graph geometries that aren't represented in pairs. I've also assumed up to this point in the video that the puzzle will use gears to combine motions of different axes. This isn't always necessary. Some generator graphs with enough degrees of freedom can be implemented without gears. The 10 squares on the Eliac puzzle express the automorphism group of PSL29 with this generator graph. 
Timur Evbatirov's Trapentrix expresses the automorphism group of PSL28 on both of its triangle piece orbits. This loosely connected graph of triangles can be folded onto just two axes, which works perfectly on a deep cut geometry. Jabberwock's photonic crystal is a deeper cut trapentrix that also expresses PSL27 in a similar way on its small pentagon pieces. Geared shallow cuts are highly flexible, but some groups have more elegant solutions for implementing their generators. Topsy Turvy and M24 Cube are two puzzles with elegant and unorthodox approaches, and I'd recommend checking them out for creative inspiration. For the rocking cube mechanism, I reused the same basic external parts that I designed for the crammed cube. Since I knew complex fudging would be required, I removed the slanted cuts from the mechanism profile. Spherical surfaces and origin cuts are much friendlier for this than slanted conicals. I notched out the feet so that two edges could squeeze together as closely as possible. I determined that the four crammed axes needed to be rotated towards the y-axis by 4.5 degrees each. This adds just enough space for the extra edge pieces. To balance out the resulting gaps in the mechanism, I moved the other four corners away from the y-axis by 1.1 degrees. I spent a long time sculpting the corner and center pieces until it looked like everything could move without collision. Then I did a test print of the full puzzle without gears. It kind of worked, but was a little clicky, and I felt that there would be too much tension with four corners moving simultaneously. I decided to take a break to work on simulating the puzzle. In part, I wanted to see if all this work was worth the eventual result, but I was also excited about the challenge of programming a fudged puzzle simulator. I ended up importing my current CAD model and roughly modeling the parts rotations until I had a virtual version that almost moved smoothly. The positions are pretty accurate, but it's impossible to get the rotations just right since they need to settle a bit after each move. The solution was to model both the forward and reverse turns as accurately as possible, then combine them. Using a quaternion interpolation algorithm, the forward animation gradually fades into the reverse animation, so that the motion appears completely seamless. I was really happy with the simulator, but suddenly realized that interpolation is the key to getting smooth motion on the physical puzzle. The track design was just too complicated to model by hand, so by importing the animated motion profile into CAD, I could approximate a perfect track by just tracing a few lines. The next test print worked much better. All that remained was to design the gears. The corners that move in the same direction can be geared together in a ring. I approximate the gear ratios and fit using cones. Thanks to the modified axis geometry, it's possible to fit both rings onto the same shell without them colliding. Once everything fit approximately, I replaced the cones with actual gears. TwistyPuzzles.com member Leobel programmed a conical gear generator plugin for Onshape CAD, which really beats drawing gears by hand. I chose the ratios carefully to make the ring a closed loop with anti-backlash. The gears are aligned to have some tension in the loop, which eliminates play in the system. The corners that move in reverse are connected in a channel that runs through the core. Originally I wanted to use universal joints, but ended up replacing them with bevel gears. So this companion cube looking thing is the finished gearbox. This outer shell was challenging to print since all of the static parts have gears under them. I couldn't figure out a good way to attach the rectangular centers to the shell, so I just made them float. The corners screw into the core one at a time with an assembly mechanism that I really like. I left out the usual springs to reduce friction. The external parts were vapor smooth to remove the printing lines. Finally, I glued magnets into the corners and edges to help maintain tension in the fudged rails and reduce rattling. 
first impressions, this thing rips. No notes. It's always nice when, after several failed tests and incomplete prototypes, the finished product works perfectly. My only note would be that while the magnets do their job well, they repel each other where the edges touch. That can be solved by just orienting the magnetic poles differently. I hope you enjoyed this design video. The tools that I use for group theory analysis and design are publicly available on GitHub. With a little bit of programming knowledge, you can use it to automate the entire generator search, canonization, and visualization process. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing anything that you come up with.